Now this is a video to help you out about the new top bags that cover my time And I'd like to take a minute before we begin If you don't know Zoro Walk and Buzz, well, where have you been? Forbidden light, here they were maze on the table is where I play most of the days Making decks, checking facts and starting a duel Cause I'll be beating all foes because my deck is so cool When a couple of garbs show up it's really not good Locking all abilities, you know they would I top like one field blower and now they're dead Use a lily, get a good mind, that's game right there The next deck I faced, it went totally great When I smacked the boss wall and sent it on its way A new EX and a copyright just beating And I used the mellow for two puzzles that look like cheating But it's just a nice fact with Zoro Work you control your entire deck And do you know what you subscribers will like? 15 complete decks to use Alright, but wait, there's still More and more than all that Indeed, we have way too much to cover In fact, let's begin this long video Now you see, I'm your host for today I'm Sandos TCG What's up YouTube, it's Zapdos TCG here and thanks again for watching our episode on my channel. In this episode, uh, by popular demand, I am gonna make a top 15 uh, best decks list because a lot of people are asking it and uh, yeah, Forbidden Light is now uh, officially uh, out for tournament play so you can use it in the standard format so I'm gonna talk about the 15 best decks in the current standard format based on tournament results so that is what you are here for. Uh, also, uh, little shout outs is like Volcanion did not make the list, uh, Silvalli did not make the list, a, a certain uh, cards just uh, weren't good enough because they haven't been that good in competitive play if we look at tournament results. Okay, uh, without disclaimers or anything for that matter, let's go straight into this video. Uh, we have a ton of uh, decks to cover here. I'm gonna start off with the Greninja decks first. So uh, Greninja Brick is still a very, very solid deck. Uh, as you know, uh, it saw a huge amount of play. It always, there's always that one player that plays Greninja and makes it to J2. Uh, or most of the tournaments, you see just one Greninja popping up at the top tables. And there's a good reason for that. It comes back with the Shadow Stitching. As long as this card is still legal in the standard format, Greninja will never go away because shadow stitching makes it that the opponent is ability locked for a turn. That means things like Malamar no longer work out and uh, also things like Secret Spring of Gardevoir, Trade of the Zoroark Jax, all abilities are shut down. Even the Tapu Lele with Wonder Attack, forget about it. So that's why it's still good. This is a very solid list uh, running on 4 Splash Energies and 6 Basic Water Energies. Also what you should know is that uh, we do not rely on Skyla anymore. This is just Cynthia because it's way more consistent drawing into that second turn Frogadier because if you use the uh, water duplicates you are set for the match and as soon as you get a bunch of uh, Greninjas out of course with the help of Evo Soda you have yourself a great uh, turn here because if you got a bunch of Greninjas out you can start using Shadow Stitch the opponent is slowed down and as soon as Greninja Break shows its face you can then start using Water Shurikens by discarding a water energy from your hand and then you do 60 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon which is awesome because uh, Aspion EX on the, the uh, hand here can uh, devolve Pokemon with Miraculous Shine, so you can uh, maybe get a little cheeky KO here if you put 60 on some Pokemon, let's say on 3 Malamars, you just devolve them, boom, out of nowhere you win the game. So this is a very solid list, definitely still one of the best decks in the format. And uh, with, uh, out further ado, there's also Greninja GX, which we talked about uh, briefly before. So uh, in this particular list, Greninja GX, what you should know about this uh, variant of Greninja is that it's all about sniping. We are gonna rely on Breakthrough, the attack of Latios, not the set to be mistaken here. We're also gonna rely on the Shurikens. We have Shuriken Flurry of the Greninja GX. If we evolve to that awesome GX, we uh, can put three damage counters on one of our opponent's Pokemon. Uh, we also have the uh, Gale Shuriken, that is the one from Frogadier. If you evolve into that one, you put two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon, and this stacks up a lot. So let's say. You got a first turn Bridget, and next turn you evolve a bunch of Frogadiers together with Latios, but uh, do not forget, Latios is a Psychic type, hitting for weakness against a popular Pokemon like Boswell GX, Naganadal GX, and more. So uh, Latios, definitely a solid choice here. Also, Espeon GX will feel it a lot uh, when uh, Latios is equipped with a choice band. So together with all that sniping, and uh, together, of course, with Super Scoop Up, you can repeat the process turn after turn until everything is knocked out. Usually you want to go for uh, big KOs on GXs and uh, stack it up with uh, that... Uh, 
amazing GX move, Shadowy Hunter GX, deals 130 damage to one of your ban opponent's bench Pokemon, a solid number, you can uh, one shot a lot of things with that, and uh, together with sniping you can will get that one hit KO uh, in order to get yourself the victor here, uh, actually the victory, and uh, also two splash energies, not a lot in this list because uh, you do plan on using super scoop up so it's not even necessary, unless you're facing a Gal Galicipod because this deck is kind of weak to grass, but other than that you should be fine, also Aqua Patch boosts up the uh, the Greninja GXs in no time, you can set them up like uh, crazy and then just start hitting for a uh, haste Slash, well you can just put yourself back in the deck with that attack, so a very solid list and the uh, Jimmy White is the one that uh, did really well, even made a top 8 list at the, uh, the uh, special event at Tours in France, so definitely that's why this uh, made this list. Actually, there's uh, more than 15 decks. I think it's about 16, 17, but uh, you know how awkward that is. The top 17 decks, who would do that? That's why I just called it uh, top 15, because a lot of decks will be similar. Uh, as a little spoiler, the three best decks will be Zoroark variants, Boswell variants, and of course, Ultra Necrozma slash Molomar variants. So uh, let's just uh, wait with that and just uh, dive straight into this. Also, another thing you should know is that certain decks uh, dropped a little bit in playability. Think about two-shotting decks. Think about Galicipod. Uh, dropped a little bit of the radar because uh, two-shotting is not the thing right now. Every deck is now starting with uh, the one-shot opportunities here because they have uh, B-String, of course, and of course, the Molomar Ultra Necrozma one-shots everything. So uh, Stall decks, on the other hand, dropped up. Uh, so uh, if you compare it with the previous list I made, uh, that was think breakthrough onto um, what was it again? Uh, Ultra Prism, yeah. That uh, included things like Sylveon and Waldex, uh, Hoopa, Staldex. This is now discluded uh, and actually not included anymore in uh, this uh, version of the top 15. Okay, moving forward, we are going to focus ourselves on some metal types. Uh, no, it's no Alolan Ductrio. It is Duskmane Necrozma. As you all know him. He deals uh, 220 damage, which is more than enough to one-shot all the main threats in the format. Uh, there's also one choice band in there because Dialga Jax out of nowhere with Timeless Jax can get a KO on Tapu Lele Jax and that will actually uh, make it so you can win the game because that you can go again because of that crazy Jax move. On the other hand, we also have a Prism Star card. The ARs are uh, invented of the Ultra Prism, but this is an amazing card from Ultra Prism. Uh, Radiant Star for each uh, of your opponent's Pokemon that play attach a metal energy from your discard, so uh, you don't even need, of course, Magnezone, but Magnezone is the heart and soul of the deck. You want to get out your Magnezone as quickly as possible with Rare Candy, if you get them out, you are good to go because with that you can attach as many metal energies from your hand during your turn as you possibly want and with Mount Coronet getting back the energies and then you can just start spamming Meteor Tempest. I do like the uh, one inclusion of uh, Fisherman in here that comes out of nowhere. Let's say uh, you don't have uh, any Mount Coronets anymore, they feel blue, blow them away and stuff. Well, you can just rely on one copy of Fisherman and then they will be like, oh my god. There's also Professor's Ladder in here, that is uh, something you should know. So, uh, an amazing list to uh, get yourself started. I know there's a 2 2 line of Octillery in there. I know it might sound crazy, but it does work. It has been proven a lot at tournaments. So, that is the list uh, I have for you with uh, the Dusk Main Necrozma. Definitely still a great Pokemon because it one shot everything which is uh, kind of the standard thing right now. Moving forward, talking about one-shotting things, we have another deck that does that very, very well. It is Tapu Bulu Vikavolt. Ever since, of course, Tapu Bulu got released in a tin promo, this was an uh, uh, archetype that was never that never went away, actually. It's really good. With Choice Band, you hit the number 210, which is awesome. You hit one-shot things like Zoroark GX, Boswell GX, and more. So uh, what more could you wish for? The only thing uh, you see here different uh, with the inclusion of some certain cards is Mew. Mew is a Psychic type. You want to hit for Psychic Weakness, of course, against the popular Boswell. And also is a one prize attacker with a free retreat. Why not include it? A 1-1 one -one line of Octillery, again, you could uh, splash in Oranguru if you're uh, more fan of using that. But I do think if you uh, finally get out Octillery and a Vika Volt, you're set for the game. You can draw cards, you can just... Uh, actually, uh, as a fun fact, there's also one Oranguru Guru in here. This is the list uh, based on uh, one that uh, did really well at the regional. So uh, trust you on this. It's a very good list. Skyla, of course, gets out your heavy ball, gets out your uh, energy recycler. So uh, sometimes you just discard all your energies and uh, you just want to get them back. Energy Recycler is amazing for that. Also recently printed as a secret rare, so uh, definitely awesome to see here. There's uh, two Tapu Leles in here. I would actually include three Tapu Leles, but this de deck uh, relies on a lot of draw support like Oranguru and Octillery, so I'm not gonna doubt it. Vika Volt, of course, strong charge for uh, every single turn. You can just search your deck for a Grass and a Lightning Energy and attach them to your Pokemon in any way you like. Of course, we set up Tapu Bulu, and of course, with Tapu Bulu, we hit for amazing damage with that amazing attack, Nature's Judgment. 
Okay, that is another one of the decks that you definitely want to prepare for because if you're uh, having a bad time, let's say you're playing Greninja, if you face Tapu Bulu, it's not going, uh, it's not gonna go too well. Moving forward, we are gonna have Guard of War GX Gallade. I know this deck uh, won the World Championships in 2017. Uh, we are now 2018, so this means that this uh, deck has been going around uh, quite a bit, so it's uh, from Burning Shadows. What you should know is that Fairy is now good again, because Ultra Necrozma is weak to Fairy, and that's why it's still good. Parallel City is a huge uh, advantage here if you uh, slap that down to Zoroark players, or any other players that uh, rely on a huge bench space. Think about Molomar decks, uh, this is amazing. Two copies of Parallel City, there's also four... Uh, uh, Fairy type rolls in here because uh, we are gonna rely on the one copy of Dianta. Dianta can get back two cards from the discard if one of your fairies got knocked out. Let's say a guard war got knocked out, you can get him uh, straight back from the discard with a DCE and a secret spring, and you go and uh, just uh, uh, obliterate the opponent. There's three type of Lilies in there, even super rod. So the, the thing that uh, using Dianta properly will definitely work, even though we're also gonna run one copy of uh, this Curly up because with a choice band, it can deal a nasty damage to Boswell Jaxes. So that's what we want here. So guard of war is still a great deck, and it's uh, recently uh, put on the list a little bit lower than usual because uh, of course Lycanroc is a, a huge enemy of Gardevoir, Gardevoir wants to set up their bench, Lycanroc punishes that and now with the B-string Boswell will obliterate Gardevoir's even further and the uh, Diancy Prism Star and you know the, the, the crazy shenanigans like that. Anyhow, moving forward, we're gonna go to the Garbodor variants. This is gonna be here. Three Garbodor variants for you today. We have Espeon Garbodor to start off with. I know Espeon Garbodor has been released since Guardians Rising, it was a very good archetype with Drompa. Now we have lowered down the Drompa count at the beginning of times. So it was three Drompas. Now we are weak to fighting, so uh, only one Drompa is great to discard special energies from Zoroark players and maybe other players that rely on special energies. Think about the Beast energy that has now recently released thanks to Forbidden Light. Now we're gonna put a, a heavy line on Espeon. So a 3-2 line of Espeon GX. Also Garbodor with Trash Challenge. Don't as, uh, and ever underestimate that because the opponent will use Max Elixirs or uh, B-Strings or any uh, item for that matter. And uh, as soon as they are up to a hi high count, we can punish them because uh, Garbodor with Trash Challenge is amazing. We are gonna run uh, two field lower. Maybe crack it up to three to uh, even discard some more float stones and choice band of the opponent to just uh, power up your Trash Challenge. But in this case, of course, Parallel City again. Disrupting the opponent with ability lock of the Garbodor with uh, the uh, Garbodor Toxin ability. As soon as it has a, a to tool card attached, let's say Floatstone or Choice Band, the abilities are shut down for both players. So that's why there's only two copies of Tapu Lele in here. You already know this archetype and it's still doing great. Why is that? Because as mentioned, Boswell is weak to uh, Psychic. And that's why all these Psychic types are now uh, uh, getting a little bit boost, uh, a little bit of uh, popularity boost here because, yeah, weakness uh, matters in uh, the TCG, so uh, deal with that. Also, four Gozma, Guzma, so you can target everything you possibly want. And eight, uh, yeah, eight Psychic Energy, so you can have that first turn Espeon GX to work with. Okay. Definitely a fun deck, I play that for myself. Uh, the ability block is so awesome and then coming in with a trash lance is so fun. Next up is Galisapod Garbodor. Galisapod Garbodor, what can I say about this list? Actually, uh, two shotting decks. This is, I think, the weakest version of the uh, bunch I mentioned here because yeah, two shotting decks are not in anymore. This relies on rainbow energy, so you can start uh, relying on uh, Galisapod or uh, maybe something else. There's two Acerola because uh, with rainbow energy and the combo of uh, uh, Acerola, you always can just get to the bench. Also, the combination of three Guzma in here uh, makes it possible to just get that effect of first impression, single energy attachment, boom, 120 damage. That is a two shotting machine here, Galisapod. Also, there's one copy of the Denny in here. Now you might say, what the hell is this card doing here? Well, Tapu Koko is a lightning type which you are going to use early game to just spread around some damage while you just set up your uh, Galisapods. That's the reason there's also four DCEs in here. When there's 20 on everything, this uh, Didene with a choice bank can one-shot Ultra across my GXs as uh, long as they have uh, at least one damage counter on them. So that's why uh, there's uh, one copy of Didene in here, probably of course for uh, the uh, Ultra across my match. Also one copy of Boswell, so this is kind of a tacked out Galisapod Garboder version uh, with Rainbow Energy. You can also get that jet, jet Punch going on, which could help out against uh, opposing Zoroas and uh, maybe even more. Just let's say you use Didene and uh, the Ultra across my has 30 HP remaining, well then a Boswell can come in uh, with the Rainbow Energy 
energy to finish the job. We have one max potion, so we're healing off is no problem. And Mewtwo, of course, because Boswell with B-String is OP. And with a choice ban and a setup Mewtwo, we can just one-shot them, which is amazing to say the least. Of course, Garbatoxin, uh, I talked about it before in the uh, previous version of uh, the Garbodor variant. Actually, there's another Garbodor variant I'm gonna talk about after the Garbodor variants because it's a whole different category. <laughs> I'm not gonna call it Garbodor variants because, yeah, a little spoiler, it's gonna be a darkness type. Anyhow, uh, we are having uh, here the ability lock and then only one copy of Garbodor with Trash Lines because the, uh, we do plan on using Rescue Stretcher and most of the time you want to rely on uh, ability lock uh, uh, more than using Trash Lines here because you do have a uh, decent amount of attackers. Okay. That was kind of a mouthful. Now we are gonna continue on. More uh, Galisopods. <laughs> no, no uh, that's gonna be for uh, in a minute here. First off, Boswell Garboder. This is something I do like. You shut down abilities. Think about Molomar, of course. Think about Zoroark with trade. And you have a, a monstrous Pokemon here, Boswell Jax, with B strings. B strings are just so good. If the opponent has four or three prize cards remaining, we can rely on this card and then we can just take two basic energies from the deck and attach it to one of our Ultra Beasts. And uh, if you uh, do the math correctly, that is just attaching those and then a manual attachment of the turn and you can just get access to all Boswell Jax's amazing attacks. Four on uh, Max Ledger still, so this is uh, gonna be pure based on uh, the Boswell. Also Mewtwo is in here for opposing Boswells or maybe Naganadel GXs. And uh, there's also Oracoria in here because Mew EX can be quite the pesky Pokemon, but uh, as long as we should shut down the ability we should be fine but sometimes they knock out our garboders and we're saying like oh no what we do now well Oracoria can come in just one shotting of course Mew EXs uh, so uh, Baby Boswell is an OP Pokemon if you haven't heard about it. Uh, Sledgehammer, if the opponent has exactly 4 prize cards remaining, this guy deals 120 damage. Of course, with a strong energy, that's 140 with a choice band, that's 170, that's a Lele KO, that's how good it is. You can even go overboard to 180 if you have that beast energy equipped it. So, very, very solid card and uh, it has to be an inclusion in every Boswell list from now on. Of course, Parallel City with Garboder, an OP combo to just slow down the opponent and uh, they will have a hard time with that. So uh, pretty straightforward, knocking out stuff with Boswell, coming in with B-Strings, shutting down abilities is just awesome like that. So we're gonna save this deck up. Um, uh, be careful of the Sycamores uh, because uh, if you Sycamore away a Beast Energy, it's gone forever, aka Lost Zone. All right, moving forward, we're gonna stick with Garboder here. We're gonna uh, uh, blend into Zoroark variants right now because Zoroark variants are also very good. And uh, how are we gonna do that? Of course, we are gonna take a look at Zoroark with Garboder. So uh, both amazing Pokemon are in here. We have also a little bit tacked out version. We have four Rainbow Energies and four DCEs. And now you might say, wow, if I have a, a Tapu Koko GX, actually not a Tapu Koko, it is a Zerkatry GX, they cannot hit me. I know that is true. But Zerkatry does not seem, uh, yeah, doesn't see a lot of play and we can always Guzma around and we have bursting balloons that we can start reusing uh, with Puzzle of Time. So, yeah, don't even uh, bother with Zerkatry, don't even be afraid because if you have Rainbow Energy uh, attached, it doesn't even uh, matter what uh, the map here because 200 damage, everything uh, either does more than 200 damage, nothing does exactly 200 damage except maybe Mewtwo GX that comes out of nowhere but nobody plays Mewtwo GX from now on. Maybe they can play with Molomar, but anyhow, uh, moving forward, Zoroark variants, what you should know. We're gonna play Zoroark 4-4 uh, of Zoroark, then of course we're gonna rely on Evo Soda, a bunch of Ultra Balls, Choice Bands, uh, what else you should know, 4 DCEs, uh, uh, 3 Bridget, so that is the basic knowledge of a Zoroark variant, and of course Puzzle of Time. Why is this variant so good? Trash Lange is crazy. Trash Lange one-shots Boswells, one-shots Naganadel, GXs and more. That's uh, something I said bazillion amount of time. We have three field blowers, so we can uh, just uh, start putting uh, tool cards of the opponent in the discard and then we can power up Trash Lange. We have Garbodor with the ability block going on. I know we ability block ourselves, but we have access to Bursting Balloon Puzzle of Time to reuse that strategy on field blow to just save ourselves in a crucial time. So you don't always have to trade. This is uh, uh, optional, but if you want to shut down the abilities, maybe against the Molomar deck, get out this one. If you're not against the Molomar deck, get out this one. So that is the main strategy of the deck. Getting out your uh, popular Pokemon. Zoroark uh, just deals out a straight 120 damage if the bench is full. A Mew uh, EX can copy the attacks of uh, Zoroark or actually anything for that matter. You can use Mew to copy uh, maybe even the attack of Cartona. Everything could happen. Why would you use that? I don't even know at this point. But actually Cartona can also attack. 
is a metal type, so that could be uh, kind of nice. Also, Zorak hits for weakness against Dawnwings Necrozma, which sees a huge increase in play thanks to Molomar, so be careful uh, of uh, Zorak variants because they are still very good. I know they get punished by Boswell, but uh, as you see, there's a bunch of tags that make quick work of Boswell. Think about Mew, think about, of course, Garbodor. Uh, yeah, Puzzle of Time, an amazing uh, way, just trade, trade, trade until you have two pieces in the hand and they can get back anything from the discard. And that is how you usually win games. Wow, uh, what a mouthful. So uh, also Mewtwo is in here because Boswell is OP, Boswell one-shot Zoroark. You know how it goes, a bunch of psychic types in the Zoroark variant. Moving forward, more Zoroark variants. I have how many versions? One, two, three, four versions of Zoroark left for you guys so if you do have Zoroarks in real life you're in for a treat because I have a bunch of versions available let's just put in Zoroark and you see how many versions that are available these did not make the list however but these uh, did so we are gonna moving forward here with Zoroark Galisapod what is good about this list as you can see once again we do see D-Dene once again uh, because D-Dene makes quick work of Ultra Necrozma after you use the flying flip or uh, maybe after that you're using a flying flip it doesn't even matter what ver uh, what time and periods you're doing this because Puzzle of Tanking back, get back your D-Dene so you at least have an answer against of course the most popular one Ultra Necrozma GX. Again, the same thing that uh, comes to mind here, we have Tree Bridget, we have Evo Soda, we have the Mew for Boswell variants, but this time around, instead of relying on Garboder, we're relying on this two-shotting monster here, first impression. The good thing is, with Crossing Cut GX, you also one-shot Tapu Ole, so that's why it's uh, still very good. This is uh, kind of famous for Tort Reckless decklist, uh, unless, uh, yeah, there's only uh, small differences here, the Denny is in here. But other than that, it's a Zoroark variant like no other that does very, very well. It's a 50-50 deck, and if you're not facing things that one-shot you all the time, you should be good. And uh, next up, we are going to have Zoroark GX with Lucario. Lucario Zoroark is kind of uh, getting a boost in popularity because, of course, we are going to see Diane, Diane C Prism Star boosting the damage for fighting types by 20, and that means Lucario can get crazy numbers here with a strong energy. And a choice band, you are already dealing 170 damage with the Diancy Prism Star. That's 190. What uh, Pokemon do have 190? Of course, the most popular one, Ultra Necrozma GX, has 190. Uh, the uh, Boswell GX has 190, but I would uh, rather use Mew EX any day, of course, to use uh, to one shot Boswell. All right. Uh, the same uh, list is in here, Parallel Cities, the Mallow is an OP combo, haven't talked about this before, Mallow can get you two cards on the top of your deck and then you can just use them by using the ability Trade. Trade lets you discard one card from the hand, drawing two. This is very powerful because it stacks, we have a bunch of Zoroarks in town and then you can just trade, trade, trade until you have again two puzzle pieces in the hand or maybe you're gonna rely on Tapu Lele Mallow, getting your DCE was never that easy or your puzzle piece to get your Mew or your Lucario out. So this is a very solid list, the bad thing is that Lucario is weak to Psychic, and there's gonna be a lot of Psychic uh, in the, the Forbidden Light metagame, so uh, be careful of that. Also, I just want to uh, make a quick mentioning here, there's also a Baby Boswell in here. Why is that? Because, yeah, as mentioned, it's a kind of an OP Pokemon, it's also a single prize attacker, makes quick work of the Hoopas. Of course, the Hoopa from Shining Legends, uh, that you all at least have an answer, just uh, start poking with this baby Boswell, so uh, maybe that could be an option. But Stall decks, as mentioned, are uh, going away pretty, uh, pretty fast here. Moving forward, we are gonna have um, Zoroark Lycanroc, one of my favorite, uh, this is not the one, Zoroark Lycanroc, one of my favorite decks ever. I've played this all season long, got a bunch of championship points with it. Why? Because it's still that good. Why is it that good? Of course, we're relying on the trade ability and of course, Righteous Beating, but we have the Axis of the Bloodthirsty Eye, so we can uh, use Mallow and even use the Bloodthirsty Eye, so we can have a Guzma effect and we can target anything early game, knock it out for damage. The good thing also, Lycanroc GX has one of those GX moves that one-shots everything if the opponent has a full bench and then nowadays everybody's, everybody's relying on a first turn Bridget so Dangerous Rogue GX is OP, one-shotting something, uh, the uh, Sudowoodoo can get a Knuckle Impact copycat so he can copy every attack that the opponent throws at you, uh, don't uh, copy the attack of Ultra Necrozma just saying, copy the attacks that uh, are OP, think about Nature's Judgment of, of course, like, not Nature's Judgment, the attack, uh, yeah, Nature's Judgment of the Tapu Bulu, you can copy that, boom, they are KO'd. Copy the attack, Phoenix Burn of Ho-Oh GX, boom, also uh, an honorable mention by the way, Ho-Oh is not in here, but powerful attacks, Meteor Tempest of Dust Mane across my boom, you can copy it, so you copy the attack, you get the one shot, and it's a one prize attacker, if you're uh, standing behind in prize card, rely on the counter, counter energy, counter energy, and of course Mellow is OP, and uh, you have multi-switch in order to set up your uh, Sudowoodoo out of nowhere when the opponent least expects it. 
What else you should know about this list? There's a Professor Kukuya in here. The, this works out pretty well because uh, Zoroark trades a bunch of time and then you can just have yourself the Bloodthirsty Eyes together with Kukui to have 170 damage with your Righteous Beating because we rely on Choice Band and Kukui so that can happen. Uh, other things that uh, you should know in this list is that this list only runs one Sycamore and one Cynthia because it relies on getting those Zoroarks out early game. And of course Mew is in here. Mew is in every Zoroark list, <laughs> except for the Garbodor variant. Actually, let's just let me just uh, recalculate that. I do think that uh, Zoroark has the yeah. The Mew is still in here because sometimes you don't get out your ability locking. So, and every Zoroark list, get yourself a Mew EX to just one shot your Buzz Balls. Next up, Zoroark with Gardevoir. In my theory, I think this is the most actually not if not the best Zoroark variant at the moment because as mentioned, Ultra Crossma is weak against Fairy. And uh, you are just having a great time against that in the meta game. Let's say they, they throw. I also have w a resistance to Psychic, so has a great matchup against Molomar variants, which is always a great thing to hear. And uh, of course, Gardevoir deals 30 damage for every energy attached to both active Pokemon. This stacks up with DCEs, Choice Bands, and stuff, so you can one shot anything that the opponent might just have uh, throwing at you. Let's say they use B String, you'll say, no problem, let me get myself my Gardevoir, and boom, you one shot because they have a bunch of energies attached. Uh, other than that, it's the same thing. Uh, th this list does have two mellows because the two mellows make sure you can get your rare candy and of course your guard of war and tan. There's also one copy of Galade in here, Premonition. It's a very great ability, lets you look at the top five cards of your deck and rearrange them in any order. Also, Sensitive Blade deals uh, 130 damage uh, for just a DCE if you use the supporter, which is kind of crazy. You can one-shot Zoroarks with that even other things that might be weak to fighting. So uh, a very solid list again, and all the rest of the cards might seem uh, very similar. Of course, we have your Parallel City. Of course, we have your Mew EX. So uh, that is uh, pretty standard for Zoroark variants. So Zoroark variants still going strong. In my uh, opinion, the most popular ones are Garbodor, Lycanroc, and uh, Gardevoir, but Lucario and uh, Golispot might just pop up out of nowhere. You never know because this is a one-shot format. So uh, I don't think Golispot is little, the, the least one I should pick, uh, if I should be uh, having a personal preference here. Okay, now that we uh, covered all the Zoroark variants, all the Garbodor variants and uh, Greninja, Duskman, across and Tapu Bulu, let us focus on Beast Box. Beast Box is one of those decks that uh, got a top 8 at a uh, um, special event, but uh, other than that we have not more info about this deck. This is my current version of the deck, this is not based on tournament decklist because the uh, decklist has not been leaked just yet. I don't know uh, why the uh, player did not uh, just give his list already. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, we have here the uh, Buzz Boswell uh, Naganadel Beast Box. You rely on uh, these Ultra Space, setting up your uh, bench with a bunch of Ultra Beasts. We have Feramosa even with the Free Retreat, which is amazing for your Guzma plays because you have four Guzmas. And it also has a, a nice bench sitter. You also have Cartana that you can get out with Ultra Space as a, as a searchable Enhanced Hammer. And uh, of course the Baby Buzzwell, I adore this card so much because uh, it's just so powerful if the opponent has exactly four prize cards remaining. Only one Tapu Lily. Now you might say, why only one? Well, that's because you want to fill up your bench with Ultra Beast and that's not gonna work because Tapu Lily, unfortunately, is not an Ultra Beast. B-String is OP. If you have not heard about this card, you've been sleeping under a rock because uh, it has been seen a lot of play. You just rely on the Naganadel. Oh no, your Naganadel with Beast Rate 20 damage on, uh, for every Beast uh, Pokemon, actually Ultra Beast you have in play, which can deal a bunch of damage. Uh, you can even stack that up with Beast Energy and Choice Band to hit a huge amount of numbers. So uh, you can deal 180 as a maximum, which is crazy to think about. And if one of your Naganadels gets one shot at, you know how it goes sometimes. You can start using Beast String and go, go with the Boswell to one shot everything. Naganadel also comes back with Stinger GX. This is a crazy GX move. Both players shuffle their prize cards into their deck and then you just uh, sh uh, put the top three cards after you've shuffled as your remaining prize cards. So if you're standing behind in prize cards, Naganadel can just help you out. Mysterious Treasure also search out your Poi Poil so you don't even need to rely on Bridget even though there's one copy of them in there. So uh, yeah, an amazing deck to say the least. It, uh, well, it has a two-shot mechanic with Naganadel, and uh, Naganadel is a psychic type, meaning if you're facing Boswell, you're gonna have a fine day, and Boswell sweeps the rest. Okay, uh, moving forward, we are gonna have the Molomar variants. Molomar variants. We're gonna talk about the Necrozma list first, which I uh, talked about uh, yesterday. So this list was based on uh, Sam Chan's list, uh, winning a special event uh, in Mexico City. 
This is uh, going to be the pri prismatic burst at attacking Necrozma GX. It also cannot get hit by uh, Corlus types, which is amazing if the opponent might just come out with your Oron Guru or uh, maybe Silph Valley. They're playing Silph Valley. I don't know why they would do that because you're weak to fighting. Anyhow, uh, prismatic burst, uh, 10 damage plus 60 more for every psychic you discard. If you have three psychics attached, boom, that's 190. The perfect number to say the least. So you don't even need choice band in this list. I talked about this list uh, a lot before. Four Molomars, two uh, Necrozmas. You do. I uh, plan on uh, also playing with Dawnwings. Necrozma has an amazing Jax move, but the uh, Black Ray Jax could help you out as well. And now you're saying, what is this Marshadow doing here? It's purely for Zoroark. As mentioned, Zoroark is still very, very powerful. Do not underestimate Zoroark, even though Boswell is just OP. Uh, yeah, uh, you're gonna rely on uh, benching down your Sudowoodoo. That way the opponent only has four bench slots available. And then you come in with your Marshadow Jax, copying something from the discard. Uh, let's say uh, you're copying uh, the... Uh, Black Ray GX, <laughs> that could be the case. Uh, also, uh, no, you're not gonna do that ever. You'll want to maybe copy the GX move of your Dawn with Necrozma, which is in the discard. That way, Marshadow becomes invincible and you can get the KOs on Zoroarks, which is uh, kind of a neat strategy. Also, thinking about it, once Sudowoodoo enters the field, the opponent will not be uh, able to one-shot the Smart Shadow because they will be limited at 130 damage. So they will need a Kakui in order to do that and uh, not all Zoroark lists run Kakui. So, pretty straightforward list. I do like uh, the inclusion of Max Lasers because, yeah, Beast Ring doesn't work on this guy. And talking about Beast Ring, we're gonna talk about probably one of the best decks in format, Ultra Necrozma Molomar. It got hyped so much. Some people don't like the Mimikyu I, I put in here, but I adore Mimikyu to copy attacks just like Sudowoodoo. You know how it goes. Knuckle Impact, we copy it, etc. Anyhow, uh, Molomar just powers up Pokemon with the Psychic Recharge putting a Psychic Energy from the discard to one of your uh, bench Pokemon, which is awesome. You can set up your Lele out of nowhere. You can set up your, uh, of course, your Ultra Necrozma to hit for one hit KOs. And the thing you should know is that this uh, is so reminiscent of the Electric and Bronzongs from the past that I just couldn't, uh, yeah, I just wanted, this is one of my favorite decks, to be honest. We also have the uh, Dawn Wings Necrozma with the Floatstone, has the Invasion ability, can just put in himself in the active position, then just retreat because we can then uh, attach uh, energies on the bench and stuff. We have Professor's Ladder to surcharge your Metal Energy because you need Metal Energies for your Ultra Necrozma, which Photon Geyser is just amazing. 20 damage, plus uh, you discard all Psychic Energies attached to this guy, and then you deal 80 more damage for each Psychic Energy you discard. If you discard two Psychic Energies, boom, one, 180. With a Choice Band, that's 210. Perfect numbers. And nothing has resistance to Dragon as of yet, I think. Which is awesome. You always hit that number, so you're fine. An amazing list. Of course, B-String comes into play because it works for Darwin's Necrozma GX and also for uh, the Ultra Necrozma GX. The three copies of here uh, and there is just amazing because uh, the opponent will not expect it at all and just you can come, you can win games with that. So that's why it's in this list. And Beast Energy also boosting the damage up. I know the last deck on the list, so it's been half, has been half an hour. I think you guys already have a, a big idea of what are, are the best decks, but we have not faced the bag, the biggest deck ever. It is Boswell with Lycanroc. This deck saw a bazillion amount of plays so far. It has been dominating the format ever since Boswell got released, but now with uh, Fa Forbidden Light, it gets even worse. We have the Diancy Prism, crazy OP, getting 20 extra damage with your Lycanroc, with your Boswell, with your baby Boswell, with strong energies, with beast energies. We have all sorts of methods to boost the damage output, choice bands, so this is crazy. And Beast Ring as a late game thing and also Octillery can get your uh, that draw support you desperately need because this list only runs one Tapu Lele. The thing you want to do is use Brooklyn Hill, get yourself a Remorate and a Boswell, get yourself going and next turn you have an Octillery so you can uh, always rely on uh, of course uh, that uh, Bizel Hand ability, drawing cards until you have five in the hand which is crazy crazy. Also two Max Elixir still in the list because one energy on a Rock Rev is so dangerous. I talked about it before uh, the... Uh, the Dangerous Rogue GX deals a bunch of damage depending on the opponent's bench size and uh, together with Diancy Prism Star and a strong energy attachment, they w even if they have two bench Pokemon, it still will deal a bunch of damage. So uh, you have to be wary here. If the opponent has three bench Pokemon, their history, of course, with those uh, boosted damage uh, uh, modifiers here. And that is pretty much the list. Four Guzmas, pretty consistent, three and three Sycamore and only one Field Blower because sometimes you want to rely on Mew, and Mew is a Pokemon with an ability. If they shut down the ability, you cannot rel longer rely on Mew. Mew can copy everything, so you can start using Jet Punches with your Mew. So that is amazing. And uh, that's pretty much it. That's all the decks I have for you guys. So uh, the thing you should know with Forbidden Light, because you subscribers asked for uh, all these deck lists, what you should know about uh, the en entrance of the Forbidden Light set is that Molomar variants are uh, top tier decks. Zoroark variants are still top tier decks. 
and Boswell Jax variants are top tier decks, uh, especially the Lycan Rock variant. So these three are the top three decks, so it's kind of like a uh, Rock Paper Scissors game. Molomar destroys Boswell, Boswell destroys Zoroark, Zoroark destroys the uh, Molomars once again. So it's kind of like the Rock Paper Scissors effect with then uh, some uh, random uh, cards, actually decks popping up here and there. We have still Tapu Rulu Vikavolt. We still have the Dusk Main, the Krozma, and Greninja decks popping up, and even Gardevoir. So, in my opinion, that were all the decks I uh, wanted to talk about today. So, hopefully, you guys enjoyed uh, the effort I did by making all these deck lists. If you want to see videos about them, check out my channel. If you have not already, I talked about every single deck, made uh, some deck uh, videos with them, some TCG Online matches, even deck profiles uh, on certain decks. So, definitely check uh, those videos out on my channel. I think you will enjoy them a lot since you are here to the end. Be sure to destroy the like button if you enjoyed the video because uh, you know it always helps out the channel a lot and uh, I do appreciate you guys' support and uh, that was pretty much all I know I was rambling on about that because you know I, me I love and enjoy playing the Pokemon trading card game so I could not stop a minute uh, of talking of the amazing decks I uh, showcased today Ch uh, test one of them out let me know how it, how they do at a tournament at a league cup at a regional at an uh, yeah a special event whatever let me know how the decks do and uh, in the comment section below and what is your favorite deck out of the bunch I listed also put that in the comment section let's get a discussion started because I want to hear you guys' opinion because this video was uh, made possible by you guys the subscribers as a suggestion anyhow this was Zapdos TCG have a fantastic rest of your day try out these decks have a lot of fun with your friends family and I uh, just uh, see you guys in the next Pokemon TCG video subscribe for more peace out